Japan is a society that has played a pioneering role in a wide number of technologies, including, of course, earthquake warning systems. But even then, people have just five seconds after the warning comes to brace themselves. Here to tell us a little more about why is a seismologist at the German Research Center for Geosciences in Potsdam. Professor Daniel Scholemer, you're an expert in the area of earthquake forecasting. Cutting straight to the chase, thousands of detection stations around the world, international networks, decades of research. Why can't we predict or forecast earthquakes yet? Well, uh, even though we have thousands of stations, we have a big problem. We only measure the signals on the Earth's surface. Unlike in meteorology, where you can measure all your values you're interested in, like humidity, wind speed, etc., mm -hmm. in 3D, we only see the Earth's surface. We cannot make stress measurements in the, in the uh, Earth, which would be very important to understand what's going on. And we're also lacking a precursor phenomenon, a signal that will tell us that an earthquake is imminent. And there have been a lot of these uh, um, precursors uh, suggested, even animal behavior, but none of them has been uh, shown that it works and that we can use it to forecast or predict earthquakes. Was there really no sign or hint of, of a, a magnitude quake of, of this size? Well, there's always a possibility, a small chance that after a large earthquake, there will come an even larger earthquake. And now in hindsight, you can say the magnitude 7, uh, two days before the big destructive earthquake, was this foreshock. But um, if you were to evacuate people every time you have a big earthquake or sort of moderate size earthquake, because there will be a bigger one, after the fifth time, nobody will follow you anymore. If we can't predict earthquakes, though, is there something else we can do to save lives? Yes, we can implement early warning system. One is implemented in Japan, as you mentioned, it gives uh, people some seconds of warning to get in a safe position or out of the house. Um, we can install these warning systems in many places. Uh, and another thing is simply uh, hazard estimates. Now we try to compute what can happen, what do we have to be prepared for, and then um, design building codes and other um, mitigation measures to save lives. You're working on a project with Japanese colleagues on understanding earthquake predictability. Can you tell us more about that? Yes, we have a so-called earthquake forecast experiment going on where different models are being tested to show what their forecasting performance is. But it has to be understood that this is not predicting particular large earthquakes. It's giving the statistical estimate where do we have to expect earthquakes and the better we are in this the better hazard assessments we can make what about a system that's going to be reliable that can reliably predict an earthquake are we going to see that in our lifetime i have i fear i have to say that i don't think we will see this in our lifetimes why why are you so pessimistic because as i said in the first in my answer to your first question we're still lacking the basic understanding in the basic measurements but i think we can do a great deal in saving lives by having better hazard assessments daniel shovelema thank you for joining us thank you for having me